Lovely. God be praised. Got any more? Yeah. Click over the shears. Wow. Uh, okay, make a note. Thank you, team. Wonderful songs. Uh, nice surprise from Jamie. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there's a surprise to me. Yes, that's right. Surprise to him as well. Uh, lovely to have you here. My name is Michael Thurlow, the pastor here at Glad You're here with us this Australia Day. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, Rivers uh, Church of Christ are hosting a Safe Churches workshop that will be on uh, the 8th of February, 12 noon to about 6. If you want to be part of that, you can see me or ring Jill in the Rivers Church of Christ office uh, Tuesday or Friday, uh, 8 to 12. You can give her a call and say, hey, I want to come. Um, some of you have already booked in and there's a few of us going, so that's the 8th of February, Saturday. If you want to be part of that, you may have done the old one, this is the new one, the body and the team are all out, uh, so we will help a few other people. Now, this morning we're starting a four week series on the life of Joseph, and we'll be looking at this over the next few weeks, and I encourage, and I'm encouraged, and you'll be encouraged, that indeed we'll speak to you about the stand that we will take, about the people God is calling us to be. We will learn a lot, we'll be challenged a lot, we'll be encouraged a lot. There's a bit to read today as we set the scene for the life of Joseph. I may at times call him Jesus, but I'll try to call him Joseph all the time, as it's in front of me here. Uh, but we'll try and get it right as we travel along. So let us pray with thanks to God for this great day and as we open the word together and journey together as we look at the life of Joseph. Father God, I thank you. This indeed is the great south land of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you call us and draw us to yourself. Lord God, our land is one of floods and drought and fire, of joy and sadness, of thanksgiving and blessing. And Lord God, I thank you that we can just take a moment here just to open your word together. Holy Spirit of God, come and speak to us and encourage us. Thank you that you hear our prayer. Thank you that you are a God who works behind the scenes. That you are a God who guides and leads and draws our life. At times everything is good. But Lord, we hang on to you. But sometimes it's hard. And sometimes it's sad. And sometimes it's confusing. But God, you are there. So over these next few weeks, if we look at the life of Joseph, speak clearly to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The life of Joseph is a shadow for us as a church and as believers. We'll see today as we look at his life and look at his story. There's a bit to read and we're kicking it off in Genesis chapter 37, 1-11. It'll be on the screen there and there'll be a few other readings as well as we go through. You can follow in your Bible or device or on the screen there. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17 years, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhau and the sons of Zolfar, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he was born to him in his old age, and he made an ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their fathers loved him more than the, any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to the dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? We will actually rule us, and they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said to them. Then he had another dream, and he told it to them, his brothers. This he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you have? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down? To the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept all these matters in his mind. 
Friends, we're called to be in the world, but not of it. In verse 2, we read that Joseph is tending the flocks with his brothers, and he goes and he gives his father a, a bad report. We're not sure what this was about, what the report was, what it referred to, but, but Joseph comes and brings it out into the open and tells his father, exposes this bad thing, this wrong thing that was happening. And as a church community, we are here to have a clear and true voice. At times we must speak out against the wrong of this world. We must speak out against sin, the bad things that happen in our community, the bad things that happen around our globe. People don't like to hear the word sin much anymore. We hear the word problem or situation or choice. Wrong is wrong and sin is sin. I'm sure we can think up many great and juicy examples, can't we? But we are here to expose sin. When sin is exposed, people don't like it. We cannot be friends with the world. And God calls us to have a positive influence within the world. We see Joseph told the truth. We too must take a stand and tell the truth. At times people struggle with God's truth and his word. But Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Because it challenges them to make a change. Verse, uh, Genesis 37, 3 to 5. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. Because he was born to him in his old age, and he made him a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Joseph would have heard his father speaking about the things of God, speaking about God's promises and covenant and dreams and visions, that God would care, that God would lead his people, and this would have impacted his life. What are those people around us hearing and seeing about God? How are we impacting people's lives about the things of God? How are we shaping their lives? Our children, our neighbours, our grandchildren, our colleagues. What are they hearing about the things of God from us? God blessed Joseph and gave him insight and dreams and visions. As parents, we have a powerful impact on our children, young or grown up, our grandchildren, our nieces, nephews, neighbours. How are we impacting those around us? Now Joseph's dad gives him a beautiful coat or robe, a richly ornamented robe, we are told. I've always thought of it as a rainbow-coloured coat. Anybody? You know, kids' books. The musical Joseph and his amazing Technicolor dream coat. Yeah, it's always, in my mind, a colourful dressing gown. <laughs> that wasn't the case. It was actually a white linen robe with long sleeves, and the robe went down to nearly Joseph's, Joseph's ankles. And around the collar, around the ends of the sleeves, and around the bottom of the robe were thin strips of brightly coloured grain. This coat was not uncommon or rogue of that day. This sort of robe was born, was worn by the upper class, the well-to-do. It said, here is an important person. This coat said to the person who wear it, I do not have to work in the field. I do not have to do hard labour. I do not have to do work that gets my hands dirty. I do not have to do manual work. Manual work was not for them. They were above this sort of work. The robe showed that Joseph was set apart from his brothers and set apart from other people. That he was deemed special. The life of Joseph. It's a shadow for us as Christians today. How do we see it? Well, when you become a Christian, 
God's word tells us that he gives us a robe of righteousness. This robe sets us apart from the world. We are different. I didn't say better. We're just different and set apart by God to be his hands and feet and voice of hope and truth. It means that we have a different relationship with God the Father than other people do. Everyone can know God as we do. It's up to them. And I pray you've made that choice. God loves his children and he has set us apart. Joseph was 17 years old and his brothers hated him for it. They hated him for his robe. They hated him for his dreams. He had a special relationship with his father. As Christians, you and I, we have a special relationship with Almighty God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16, we read, Therefore, let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us approach God boldly. God is there for us in our time of need. Joseph knew his brothers hated him. He tells them his dreams, that he would be exalted and they would be humbled, and he hates him all the more. And in verse 12 of Genesis 37, now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, as you know your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem, come, I'm going to send you to them. And Joseph said to them, no way, they hate me, they don't like me, and I'm not going. Oh, no he didn't. <laughs> He said, okay, very well. I'll go down and come and visit them. I know they hate me. But he went faithfully. He obeyed his father and went to see his brothers. God calls us as a church to go, to reach out to beyond these walls. At times the reception may not be great, but God calls us to go. To go into all the world and to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Joseph was going to Shechem to tell his brothers that their father missed them and that he loved them. And to see how they were doing. Up on the screen there for you this morning, what was Shechem? Well, it was a wilderness. A dangerous place. God is calling his church to go and bring people out of the wilderness. Out of spiritual darkness into a safe place and a safe home. We are the voice of God for people who are lost. We may be the only Jesus they meet, but let us go with a clear and true and powerful voice of hope and grace and forgiveness and acceptance and love and healing. Picking it up at verse 14 of Genesis 37. So he said to them, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring back word to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the field and asked him, what are you looking for? Probably his coat gave him away, I reckon. <laughs> he replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they're grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go down to Dothan. Why not? Good choice. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. Joseph kept looking, kept persevering for his brothers. He followed his father's word to the letter. He obeyed his father. His father said, go find your brothers, and he did. He pressed on as we must press on, as we must follow that call and follow that dream and follow that word from God. There may be a few bumps in the road, a few ups and downs, but we faithfully follow what God has called us to do. In Genesis 37, verse 18 to 22. But, who loves a but? You know, it's going to get exciting. It's going to get a bit dramatic. There's a but there. But they saw him in the distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes the dreamer! 
they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into these cisterns and say a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the desert. But don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said all this to rescue him from them and to take him back to his father. What a good plan. Up on the screen there, Reuben had a good plan, but it was one of compromise. Being the older brother, he should have stood up and said no and taken Joseph back to their father. But he tried to be friends with the world. We cannot be friends with the world. The first thing the brothers do is to strip him of this robe. The third, first thing the world tries to do is to strip us of our message and of our righteousness, of our hope and of our truth. But we need to stand strong and to stand firm. They threw Joseph into a well, and later on the brothers would testify how the cries of Joseph, their brother, rang in their ears for 27 years. This would not have been a good time for Joseph. This is not a nice little fairy story with a guy in a bright coloured dressing gown. This would not have been an enjoyable experience where his brothers hated him and wanted him to suffer and to die. In Genesis 37, 25 to 27, as they sat down to eat their meal while their brother starves, while their brother who's beaten is in a well, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices and bile and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down, take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Good idea. Nothing. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him. After all, he is our brother. Oh! <laughs> and our own flesh and blood. His brothers agree. Look how righteous Judah sounds all of a sudden. Oh, don't kill him, let's sell him as a slave. There's a better idea. Sounds like the world to me. God says to be in the world, but not of it. Just imagine Joseph. We don't know how many hours he's been in this pit, battered and bruised. Finally, they, they pull him up and he goes, Oh, fantastic, okay, let's go. All's forgiven, let's go back to Dad. That's all right, just a mere flesh wound. But no. His life's about to change. They sell him as a slave to the Ishmaelites. Who were these people? Well, they were the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's firstborn son with Hagar, and they were cast out of Abraham's camp. The Arab world came from the descendants of Ishmael. The Ishmaelites were their enemy, and they've just been given Joseph, the golden-haired, coat-wearing boy, the favourite son of Jacob. They sold their brother, their own flesh and blood, to their enemy. I don't think Joseph would have been treated very well at all as they headed on down to Egypt. Final bit of scripture this morning. Genesis 29, uh, 37, 29. To 36. When Reuben returned to the system and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boys are there! Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dripped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it, whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal must have devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. 
All his brothers and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning I'll go down to the grave to my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, they sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of the Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. So we close today just a couple of final thoughts. How those brothers, how those brothers would have been tormented for 27 years now. They need to live with that sin. They need to live with their actions. They need to live with their lies and what happened to their brother. As Christians in the church, we need to stand apart from the world. Be in it, yes, but not of it. Let us approach God boldly in our time of need because he loves you and loves me and cares for you and cares for me. Let us stand faithful. Don't let sin trap us and take hold of us. But let God call us all to a life of faith, to a place of righteousness and forgiveness, to a place of hope and calling as we serve him faithfully. God bless you. There's more next week.